Hello, and welcome to another episode of Adventures in Messaging. I'm Emma Stratton, and today I'm super psyched to be joined by Jack Way, Senior Director of Products Marketing at Smart Recruiters. Hey, Jack. Hey, Emma. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming on. It is so good to have you on the show. And I'm really excited to talk to you because you are at Smart Recruiters. You know, Smart Recruiters has been around for five years, in the beginning doing very well in the SMB space. And recently, um, you know, your company has made the shift into the enterprise space, successfully gone up market, really repositioned both the product and the company uh, for the enterprise space. And I know this is something that so many product marketers and marketers want to do. So I would love to just hear your story about, you know, how you and the team really helped make this incredible shift. Yeah, that's a good start. Um, so you're absolutely right. You know, I was brought in to Smart Recruiters to kind of establish product marketing and help make that transition from being more SMB to the enterprise. And um, where we started was essentially, of course, then the theme of your podcast and your video series is messaging and positioning, right? So we kind of looked at, um, we did an audit of the entire product suite and we ran a market texture exercise just of exactly, you know, what were our strengths and weaknesses um, that we perceived to be and how did that mirror and match up with what our customers felt, right? And before I launch into, okay, how, what is the process of getting to that right positioning and messaging fit with the enterprise? I think it's really important to say that that doesn't go alone. So at the same time we were going through that exercise, we also ran a packaging and pricing exercise because, of course, when you're talking to different audience and personas, um, their buying behavior becomes different, different stakeholder involvement. Uh, and by me saying that, there's also this persona piece, right? When you're talking to an enterprise buyer versus smaller companies where individuals are making the decision, right, you have to really do a persona journey map, understand what each stakeholder's motivations pain points are and essentially make sure whatever you're saying appeals to everybody along the way and every level of stakeholder involvement along the way as well. Um, so really, again, there's this, to summarize, there's this positioning messaging piece, then there's this pricing and packaging and underlying across the board is a market texture exercise and the persona mapping. So a lot of pieces coming into play. And all of this really involves first and foremost, the customer, right? So at that point we had one, I would say about five big logos where these company sizes um, were 10,000 employees or above. In fact, we had one customer just signed on who had 400,000 employees around the world, wow. right? So a huge like gap in the middle, right? We were used to working with more like 200 FTE companies and now all of a sudden going to 10,000 to 400,000. And uh, so first thing I ordered was to interview these customers of why did you choose us really? How has your experience been so far? What, you know, matched our initial pitch versus your real experience now? And really, um, this is going to sound a little bit like robotic, but taking a messaging framework as a template and filling it out customer by customer, role by role, and then doing the internal analysis of, okay, what does this really come down to? Um, I think the key difference of how we approach that was compared to some other companies I've either spoken with or been part of is usually PMM, I think, gets a lot of direction or gets swayed a lot by internally influence, right? You talk to your sales team, you talk to your executives, you talk to all customer facing teams as well as product, you land on this point and then they go validate. I think it's really important to make sure that that approach is balanced on both sides. At the end of the day, what the customer wants to hear wins. Yeah. Right? So we really made sure of that. And then to so the pricing and packaging piece, same thing, right? Like doing the right primary research focus groups, understanding what it is that they're willing to pay for, what they expect to be part of the core platform. And that helped us to really iron out, okay, what should come as the core product versus add-on modules, right? So we, we, on that piece, we also went from like three standardized plans that smaller companies would pick from to an a la carte menu, essentially. It's like, here's a core product and here is six other add-ons that you could customize because we all know enterprise customers want to customize their solution, their suite. Right. And, you know, in the last three years, we've expanded from six add-ons to now 10 plus also standardized service offerings. Um, and it just allows the enterprise customer who wants the flexibility and really a system of record to pick and choose exactly what will meet their needs. Yeah, that's great. So in your own mind, because I know when companies want to go and have their messaging more enterprise focused, what I see is a lot of times the language can get 
like very jargony or very <laughs> high level, or it's like, we need to say these certain buzzwords or else the enterprise buyers won't think we're like an enterprise grade solution. Um, so any kind of thoughts there or advice on how to really approach like moving into enterprise messaging without kind of, yeah, relying on these phrases and buzzwords that people yeah. think B2B enterprise buyers need to hear. I mean, what are your thoughts there? Yeah. I'm going to borrow from uh, this video I saw a few years back that really changed my perception of what to lead with when it comes to messaging. And it's from uh, Simon Sinek's Lead With Why. Right? I don't know if you've ever seen it. Or the, oh, the, or the Golden Watchers Circle. There yes, you go, of right? Course. And like, <laughs> instinctively, we all just tend to say, okay, well, this is what is so great about the product we're trying to push and market. And so the whole approach is to just flip this upside down, right? To start with the bigger picture. Why are we doing this? And by the way, let's take a step back. I think understanding the who is even more important than the what, yeah. right? You want to make sure you're talking to the right people. And then why should I pay attention to you? And then, okay, how is this going to get done? And then what it is that they'll actually experience of what we will deliver as the vendor. And so I think structuring the, your internal processes of coming about the right position messaging is the same thing. And when you have, you know, the, the basics in the foundation in place, I think the toughest thing for PMM to do right now is the process of crystallization. Okay. So to your point, there's, there are so many buzzwords and jargon, and sometimes we get in our own heads and you get in your, and you get into the weeds. Yeah. Right. I think it's very important to almost like make sure someone is tapping you on the shoulder and say, okay, just pause for a couple of days so you can reframe and, and get a fresh perspective, come back and look at what you've built and say, if I'm a 80 year old grandmother, grandfather, or if I'm a six year old and I read this, am I going to really get it? Right. I think that's a good, good gut check to make sure you've, you've really like crystallized and simplified the message to as short and concise as possible, but still getting the points and the essence of the message across. I think that's where uh, the beauty and truly effective PMM um, comes to light. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's an art simplicity when it's done right. It looks effortless, like it was so easy, but it's actually so hard to achieve any tips for that crystallization or have you ever given any advice to any of your colleagues? Um, how do you keep things simple? To literally step away for a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because, um, I, I've tried to, or I've asked the team to try to ask for feedback from multiple angles, right? Whether it's others on the immediate team or on other teams or a whole different part of the business or customers, friendlies, customer advisory board, analysts. Uh, it doesn't, it just more opinions, more chefs in the kitchen and pots and ha hands and pots, whatever you want to call it, right? It just makes it more difficult. So once you've done the proper research up front, be confident in what you've developed. And then the goal is to just cut, cut whatever you can and get it down to the essence. That's my only advice. And, and it's a force, forcing mechanism is to literally not look at it for two, three days. Just step away from the document, right? Yeah. Step I, away. I think I saw you post something on LinkedIn a few weeks back, which is you, you were, I think you were taking a break or a little vacation. So Jack, tell me if you could hop in a time machine, go back in time and give your younger self some really good advice as you're setting out in this crazy wild marketing career, what would you tell yourself? Uh, it's an unfair question because I'm biased, right? I'm a product marketer at heart, I suppose. And so maybe I'm going to say, go straight into product marketing. I mean, I've had a very zigzaggy career where it bounced around. Like I started out in branding. Then I thought that was too qualitative. So I got into management consulting. Then I got into, you know, startup marketing when we moved to the Bay Area, just naturally. But I didn't truly get into PMM until I started my own company, um, exited, and then got introduced to a lot of other portfolio companies by VCs I met along the way. And I fell into it. Didn't even know that that was product marketing at the time, right? But I do love the function a lot because it's so cross-functional. Like you work with many other teams. People always say PMM sits at the middle of product and sales. Well, really it's grown to product, sales, customer, customer success, perhaps design and pre-sale. Like, like we, we really touch everything. And so if you're starting out to be a marketer, I truly believe that PMM is a great place to start because you get to have a nice bird's eye view of everything that's going on. And then you can specialize, but maybe it's not for everyone. And if you do want to specialize, by all means, pick a particular area, right? But if you want to get a lay of the land and get a taste of everything, 
I think PMM is a great place to start. Yeah, you know, I love that. This is a theme that has been a recurring theme throughout this series is people falling into product marketing, not knowing it existed, just kind of coming at it from all different angles. And I think it's super cool. I'm a huge fan of zigzag career paths. Um, I did look at your LinkedIn and I was like, wow, he's done branding. I liked that. I've done branding, you know, consumer branding. And it's interesting. That's kind of too qualitative for you. So you like this mix of the data piece, right? And the qualitative and the fact that it is such an all round, all encompassing everything position, right? For sure. Yeah. And that data piece, I think is a big differentiator for people who are interested in product marketing, but didn't necessarily know about it. It's, it really is not all about position messaging, even though that's very critical, right? But it is a bit of a science to get to that point too. And I love that mix. Yeah. What do you like more? The positioning and messaging work or all uh, of the fact finding and distillation and data digging? Uh, I'm going to say I'm right there in the middle. <laughs> I'm going to choose one or the other. <laughs> then you're the perfect product marketer, I think. <laughs> oh. Yeah, well, it's been super fun having you on this show, Jack. Thank you for joining me today. <laughs> Thanks for having me, Emma.